Hello and welcome to our Catholic News Roundup. Today we have in the studio, <laughs> we have Michelle, and we have Alf, yeah. and of course we have Beats. <laughs> <laughs> and that's me. Good morning. Yes, Good morning. Yes, morning. Okay, so thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Andre. I know Mitch is hungry. Yes. And I yes. miss you guys because I was away for, for a long time. For a while, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, but a lot of things, uh, interesting yes. things have been happening as yeah. well. Uh, whilst you've been right. away. Yeah, it's been yeah. action packed. It has, oh. it has been. Okay, I, I guess the first one that we'd like to start off with is His Eminence's uh, lecture at the Ethos Institute. That's right. Yes. Right? That, that, was, was, that was last Friday. That's right, mm. on the 17th of November. Mm. That's right. At uh, the St. Andrew's Cathedral Pavilion. That's right. So, because it's at St. Andrew's Cathedral, this yep. is an ecumenical event. It's actually not. Uh, organized by the Catholic Church, yes. but by uh, the Ethos Institute for yeah, the Ethos, <laughs> <laughs> the Ethos Institute. Well, it is <laughs> a, it's, it's, yeah. it's a right. research institute actually set up by the uh, the uh, National Council of Churches. Ah, mm -hmm. I think it's the public Ethos Institute for Public Christianity That's because right. um, yes. Ethos, for short, mm. is a think tank uh, that yes. gets together speakers and. Um, uh, yeah. Other theologians to talk about contemporary issues That's that right. might impact the Christian community. That's right. And what is the Christian perspective mm. of such trends? You Indeed. know. Mm. Indeed. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And so His Eminence uh, was uh, uh, duly invited, and of course he very willingly accepted it. Yes. Uh, and it was quite a good turnout. I, I understand. Yeah, we we were both there, right? That's um, right. Yeah. 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 Because so we thought it was a fascinating topic, and we yes. just got to hear what he's going to say. Yes. That's yes. right. You know, I mean, it's it's interesting the way he started off. Uh, I think was was really interesting. Well, the theme of the the talk was promoting the culture of life mm. Mm. and battling the culture of death. You know, so um, do you know what that means? Yes, it's, it's not some bacterial culture in a. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're making me think of you. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm hungry, <laughs> lah, because I'm thinking of yeast. You okay. know. <laughs> so, so maybe, okay. So maybe yeah. I'll help to set yeah, the context, sure. right? Mm. So yes, apparent, uh, and this is, uh, I think, uh, how His Eminence juxtaposed it, right? Uh, Seven thousand years ago, we we're told in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter fifteen, verses nineteen to twenty, God gave His people a choice. Yes, He did. He said. See, I have set before you life and death, mm -hmm. blessings and curses. Now choose life so that your children may live and you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. That's right. Mm -hmm. So his eminence presented to the audience uh, with a sort of a similar choice. Mm -hmm. And he started off with this. He said, will you embrace the culture of life or the culture of death? Are you a member of the civilization of love and truth, loving, serving, and honoring your fellow men? Or do you subscribe to a throwaway culture where you treat your brothers and sisters as objects to be used or abused and then discarded? So actually, his eminence was referring to uh, Pope St. John Paul II's uh, encyclical, 1995, yes. mm. yep. called Evangelium Vitae, which means the gospel of life. You mm. know? Yeah, so he was saying in 1995, John Paul II, he invented the term culture of life and culture of death, mm. by the way. Mm. And he said the culture of death is one which does not respect the dignity of the human person, treating, in simple words, mm. uh, people not as persons, mm. Mm made in the image and likeness of God, right? Yeah. And therefore carrying a divine spark with them, within mm. them, a reflection of God himself. And a but, dignity also. And a dignity, mm. that's right. But as objects to mm. be used, abused mm. or discarded. Commodities. Commodities. Mm. So uh, the reason why Pope John Paul II was saying that in 1995 was that it was, remember, uh, I just graduated, you know, that was a time of Marxist communism, mm. the Cold War and everything. Ah, uh, yes. Right? yes, that's yes. right. And um, there was a lot of consumerism and all that at the same mm -hmm. time, you know, where people would just buy and buy, you know. Um, I suppose maybe it's kind of <laughs> retail therapy mm -hmm. when the, the events of the world were, were so so uncertain, right? Right. So, um, co you know, communism, they, they treat people like uh, part of a collective, 
Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, they are not yeah. individuals mm. with dignity and, and to be respected as such with all their unique characteristics, yes. whether yes. you're young or disabled mm. or uh, elderly. If you can't be part of that machine mm. that produces Apparatus, for the yeah. common... And they don't, they don't mean but common good is mm. for... The, the 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 you know the good of the whole but it's not it's the same as common good because mm. common good in catholic social teaching is where everybody contributes and participates so that every single person can flourish and develop their own potential right, right? Mm, to their right. fullest yes. yeah. but communism is no you just you know you just do what you can it's productivity efficiency right. and stuff mm. like that right yep. so he pope john paul ii said that's a culture of death Mm. And so if someone is not useless, someone is not functional, mm. someone cannot contribute, like the unborn, yes. uh, the elderly, and those who are challenged those, those physically, are emotionally, yes, yes in any way, mm. you know, they are condemned. Lah. So that is the culture it's of guarded. death. Yeah. Really... But John Paul II said, the culture of life is the one where everyone is embraced and each mm. person serves, honours, loves and dignifies the other as they should. Because yeah. if we have the divine spark in us mm. and in the New Testament, right? Mm. Because the Deuteronomy is Old Testament, right? Yes. Now we have Jesus, the Holy Spirit mm. within us. Then we should be treating each other with reverence, yeah. mm. with awe, right? Mm. With with everything mm -hmm. that we would treat Jesus as. Exactly. Mm. And I, I think Pope John Paul was very much the, the right person yeah. at the right time. And yeah. he himself, I mean, you know, came from Poland and yes. they were very right. much under mm -hmm. the communist rule. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Right? Yeah. And so he knew exactly. what he was talking and he saw the yes. culture of death himself mm -hmm. yeah. and experienced it and That's lived right. it at that time. So Cardinal mm -hmm. was saying nothing much changed today, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's mm -hmm. right, In fact, you know? ever more than before. Yeah. 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 You were talking about consumerism. Yes. Yeah, it's like I'm stand now. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's why Pope Francis recently talked about the throwaway culture mm -hmm. in his uh apostolic letter. I think it's Evangelii Gaudium. Right. The joy of the, the gospel. Joy of the gospel, yes. So if we are joyful and we want to proclaim the gospel, the gospel, as John Paul II said, is the gospel of life. Mm -hmm. And that gospel must be proclaimed with joy. Mm. And Francis says, go away with the throwaway <laughs> culture, you know, like disposables. Huh? Like, like, you yeah. know, we're, we're such a culture of waste now, isn't yeah. it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But, you know, again, it's uh, it depends on whether we want to go with that culture. Yep. Of course, uh, and go with the flow. Yes, as most people are yes. doing. Yeah, it's. I'm, I look. We all get caught up on uh, advertisements, and and you know uh, now with social media, actually, mm. you can just be going through a very simple um, uh, and a very innocent uh, post, post or something yes. like that. Yeah. That's and right. then you get all these pop ups yeah, and all right. that yeah. coming at you. Yeah. Yeah. it's like yeah. you know, it's, so it's it, pervasive. It and, it is. Yeah, it's and invasive. it's subtle. Yeah. And we do not know that we are subtly contributing to the culture of yeah. death mm -hmm. yeah. by, like you say, like, huh, forwarding posts without thinking mm. and, and contributing to the chaos, the disorder, yeah. mm -hmm. the, the the bias and the prejudices that, you know, yeah. we may not realise are in it. Yeah. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. But, so, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, so how, what was the response like, I mean, from the Okay, so what actually the Bishop uh, Cardinal wanted to emphasise in the whole talk is that people don't understand the foundation of the culture of life, yes. which mm. is yeah. the dignity of the human person. Yeah. Mm. And he said that, you know, in the book of Genesis, God created all creation, but the climax of his creative work was man, which he mm. saw was very good mm. as compared, everything else was good, right? And he said he gave everything on creation for man to dominate. Yeah. Except... Man himself. Except man himself. Yeah. So what he was saying was mm -hmm. that man does not have the right to do with other men or even himself as he wills. Mm -hmm. So you cannot treat anybody as if life was cheap. Right. You can't even think your life is cheap. Like, you know, there's so many assisted suicide, suicide attempts and all that. That's, so, yeah. so, 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 That's another topic that we can talk about another time. But really, yeah. I mean, but, but it's true. It is becoming an issue. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. and really, uh, I think in some parts of the world, uh, assisted death is like, yeah. you know. Okay, in some parts of the world, it's a, a necessity. It's a survival of the fittest. So, for example, when I went on mission in Kenya to a very remote part, part of Africa, mm -hmm. the missionaries, we I accompanied the group of missionaries who who walked about, well, it was a long walk at 
at sunset, you know, at mm-hmm. about three kilometers, mm-hmm. to just bring food to an old lady who was blind and infirm mm-hmm. in, in a tent. And they are very primitive there. So it's yeah. very primitive culture. You cannot compare with us here. Yeah. And uh, they gave her milk, packet milk, mm-hmm. and they gave her some biscuits, you know, and she was very happy. And um, I asked the missionary, but what happens when it rains or when, mm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, it becomes too dangerous for you to make this journey? Right. And they said, unfortunately, she will starve. And mm. I said, why don't they look after her? They, they said, well, simply, in this part of the uh, the country, resources are so scarce, mm. food, water is so scarce, that it really is like she's useless. She can't do anything anymore. She can't cook for the family. She, mm-hmm. She's so old, she's 80-something. Yeah, but they're the, trying. Yeah, the miracle yeah. is that she survived this long in this kind of environment. But mm-hmm. they said, she's a... She, she's a She's a waste of resources, you know. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. Mm. yeah. It's like, they it's autumn. Said they, they said that. Yeah. And I, then I asked, her, <laughs> asked them, I said, but you have so many goats, you know. Why don't you just kill one and give her? Then she looked at me and said, do you eat your money? And I was like, oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> you know, mm. really, because cultural differences are so great. Yeah, but but that's there, true also. it is a su- survival of the fittest. Yes, yeah. mm. But now, in today's society, it yeah. looks as if it's a... Survival of the richest, or survival of the strongest, yeah. or survival powerful. of yeah. the yeah most yeah. powerful. Yeah. yeah, so it's different, right? At the it's expense different. of everybody else. That's right. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, yeah. right. We are just the numbers making up the correct, you know, or the yeah. stepping stones, or the, yeah. the, the 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 floor mats, or mm-hmm. whatever. For the powerful. Yeah. yeah, for for personal gain, mm-hmm. for personal gain, convenience, uh, or 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 profit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so that's. That's personal, right? It, it's very self-centered and self-absorbed. So is, that's yeah. that's what yeah. a bishop calls individualism. Yeah. And there's no like sense of right or wrong. It's like, how can you do that? You know, he's a per- he's a human person. How can you treat him like that? Oh, really? Well, uh, well, it suits me. You know, so there's no yeah. objective right or wrong, mm. uh, and that's relativism. Yeah. People right? are only as valuable as they are useful. Yeah, and, yeah. and people yeah. don't see that, right? Yes. Or they don't want to see it because yeah. uh, there's. There's no morality anymore, right? The, the, the fool says in his heart, there's no God. That's what. And if there's no God, there's no absolute truth. Mm-hmm. If there's no truth, there's, there's no else. yardstick, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the fact that, you know, that uh, his eminence used this uh, quote from Deuteronomy. Yeah. Or, no, you know, he didn't. Yeah, that, was well, my, well, that was my, that was my, that was, no, that was my, well, but yeah. I'm saying that. But if the Lord, I mean, you know, if that was recorded already so long ago. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. In the Old Testament, right? And the Lord really, I mean, says, you choose. You choose. Between life and death. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. And yeah. Now, like thousands of years later, we still face with the same thing and man is mm-hmm. hasn't uh, improved yes. very much, yeah. have we? Hasn't learned. We, we never learn. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you yeah. know, uh, one uh, member of the audience actually came up uh, to share that, you know, she she she's an abortion counsellor or she works mm-hmm. in an abortion clinic. Yeah. Uh, not in an abortion clinic, but in a hospital. And she always, there's an abortion, you know, because... Uh, uh, Counselor, uh, counselor, and she says so many young girls go for counseling. She said it's so sad. Mm. Uh, wh- why? Why? Yeah. And Eminent simply said because people don't know that we are made in the image and likeness of God. Mm-hmm. And you know, abortion is precisely the fact that we don't see the, the fetus as a human person because yeah. it doesn't look like one, doesn't act like one, <laughs> it cannot function right. like one. Yeah. But right. nevertheless, we know that the Catholic Church teaches that life begins at conception. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, so um, then, then you have the the the, you know, the pro rights movement, which says, oh, about the right of a woman to do whatever she wills with the body, mm-hmm. but they do, they forget the right of the unborn child to live. And Bishop said that That's is right. an yeah. inviolable right because yeah. God is the one who gave life to us. Mm-hmm. This life, we as stewards of creation in Genesis, right, mm-hmm. are, are supposed to preserve, protect, and serve life, mm-hmm. and yet we destroy it. You know. <laughs> Remember in the in the in St. Luke's Gospel, yeah. when Our Lady goes to visit her her, her cousin Elizabeth, yes. and it's recorded that that's the right. child leapt in her womb. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right. That's right. Mary's, you know, yes. uh, greeting to yes. Elizabeth. The child right. knew. The child knew. Saint John yes. jumped. You know, and I'm I'm a mother, right? Uh, none of you can claim that honor right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, all yours, all yours. Yeah. So when the baby, you know, when when the baby, I don't you know, think Alf and I can. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> You, you no. can read that. I mean, that's about, what, four, five, six months. I can't remember now. It's a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. But, but if, uh, if yeah. you just put your hand there, you can feel it. You can feel it. And yeah. you yeah, can you know, yeah. see oh, she, the elbow Elizabeth popping Elizabeth was up. in her six months. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So that yeah. is, around there is the time of really? quickening, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, 
mean? Yeah. There it is. And and, you know? and and there it is. It's also euthanasia, right? When you're too old and you mm. feel that, you know, um, that person, like that like that uh, case in Africa. But now mm. nowadays, it's a different because we say, oh, this person is suffering so much. Why don't we, you know, he, let's say he's in a coma and like a vegetable, right? Mm, mm. What what's, what What's the point of living? There's no quality of life. Mm-hmm. And Bishop yeah. said, it's not about quality of life. It's about like, what does it cost you to preserve that life? You know, mm-hmm. does it, if you can give food and water and then you can, you know, uh, bring the person home, but that's all it costs, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, we're not talking about what he says is disproportionate uh, means of treatment or, un- that's right. you know, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. you know, where you really have to go all out with all kinds of maybe uh, expensive or experimental treatments, right? Mm. And he said nowadays, there are so many forms of palliative care that's right. and pain relief. Yes. And just because you don't have the time to sit by this person and feed and, you know, nourish him mm-hmm. and keep him company, doesn't mean you can, you know, just say pull out the plug because it's not convenient. For yeah, you. it's all about convenience these days. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, sadly, mm. this is, um, it's going to be a, a long, long journey, I yeah, think, before anyone agrees in, in the first place. And another top, another sort of journey was also taking place in the church, actually. Ah, yes. The mm-hmm. whole month of October. Mm, that's right. Right. In, Rome. Right. in Rome. In Rome. And it was yes. called the Synod yes. of yes. Bishops, yes. Yes. right? And yes. that was a journey. That was a journey. Mm. Indeed. And I think um, it was a difficult journey. It was a difficult journey. And I think, but a lot was brought up. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the, I think this is... I think the first time in this century, anyway, mm-hmm. that the church has had such a major gathering, That's yeah. right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. To come together and to talk about things as church, That's but right. not just talk, but mm-hmm. talk in the spirit. In right? the spirit, exactly. conversations in the spirit is what they called it, right? Yeah, and uh, apparently it yielded much fruit. It did, mm. yeah, in a different way. Yeah, yeah, on the on the path of friendship, yes, and listening and togetherness. And one of the things that uh, His Eminence said when he just returned was that uh, there was a lot of silence yeah. and mm. listening yes. and dialogue, mm. conversation. And prayer. And yeah. prayer. Mm. And the, prayer. the whole thing was anchored in prayer. And that was yeah. a beautiful thing yeah. because, you know, they had all the, they called them interventions, right? But actually they were all meditations. And of course, yes. uh, Father Timothy Radcliffe was the one who stood out, you know, the yeah. most. And yeah. he was actually almost, uh, well, they called him the, the spiritual father of the synod. Yeah. Right? They beautiful. gave him that, that, that beautiful title. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if, if I was reading just some of his uh, meditations, it was, my goodness, mind-blowing, really. Mm-hmm. It was deep, yet it was actually quite relatively yeah. easy to understand. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it, he always hit the nail on the head. His, his uh, retreat... I think set the the direction, the alignment yeah. for the whole gathering to take place. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of us are lacking in today mm. because yes. when we go into a meeting, we're yeah. thinking about what do we want? Yes. Mm. How do we get there? Yes. From a human or person point of view, yeah. but we often forget that everything is spirit-led, that God is in control of everything. I think, you know, the thing is, you're right. Agendas are, is already set, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, personally, sometimes, uh, or from a particular organization's point of view, mm-hmm. you know, and so we want to, uh, we, we're in this world, right? So we want to present it. We want everybody to know yeah. about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But apparently, you know, those conversations did take place, but it was the this, this spirit of prayer that prevailed, right? Yes. yes. And they said, wow. And I, and I think what we can Not learn, everybody agreed. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. everybody agreed. Of course not. Yeah, but yeah. But it was the spirit in which it was taken. Yes. You know, you know whenever, when, whenever something is different, there will always be a pushback. Yeah. There will be questions. Why like this? You know, mm. will it work? Is this mm. how it's supposed to be done? Yeah, but when you begin with something yes. like an ecumenical vigil, uh, when, when you begin yeah. with yes. something like a three-day retreat, yes. <laughs> I, I think that was very important for people to understand the context of how this whole thing is going to be done. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. It's not just me, myself, and I. Great. Mm. You know, when you steep yourself yes. in prayer, you know, in, in listening, and I think the important thing that a lot of people have been talking about this synod is the the permeation of silence. Yes. Mm. Where you just don't say anything, 
but you're listening, you're praying, yeah. reflecting. And I, I think that this, in the business of busyness, not the business, but the busyness of the business of mm-hmm. this world, we yeah. have lost that sense of silence. Mm. Yes. And I'm thinking, it just struck me as you were all sharing that mm. this is something we can adopt in our own ministry or prayer group meetings, right? Mm-hmm. That, okay, uh, let's say ministry, uh, you've got so many things to discuss, yeah? Mm-hmm. But instead of uh, dis- going into saying a short opening prayer and going into a discussion straight away, mm-hmm. what we could do, and I've actually... We have actually done it in my prayer community with mm-hmm. great fruit, mm-hmm. like just like the synod, is mm-hmm. that, okay, let's say you have a two-hour meeting. Mm. Uh, you have set aside two hours for your meeting. First hour, just do Lectio Divina mm. or something, you know. Okay, that may take a long time. One hour, you know. Yeah. Normally, we do yeah. praise, a little bit of praise and worship and then we... we uh, meditate on the word of God, mm-hmm. then we have intercessions, especially for what we're going to discuss in the next hour, right. then it's any other business, you know. Yeah. So the mm. primary business is prayer. Yes. And AOB is actually what you want to discuss. And we mm-hmm. found out that, hey, when when you actually have played together and all that, now the decisions you have to make, the resolutions you have to consider, mm-hmm. everybody gels, mm. yes. you know, and it's so smooth. The, the funny thing is, in many church uh, yeah. meetings, yeah. right, it's, Prayer time is always the shortest. <laughs> and then yeah. AOB is like the longest. Yeah. Oh, and then, in the know? presence of God. And yeah, then it's, right. dong, it's like the presence of everybody else. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like... Yeah. And you know, the other thing about this particular synod yeah. also yeah. was the posture. Mm-hmm. The posture with which this this journey was taken. And they, you know, the, I, there was this um, picture going around of everybody sitting... At same level, mm-hmm. uh, at uh, round tables, mm. everybody being yeah. able to yeah. meet everybody yeah. else. Yeah. And there was no hierarchy. That's right, because yeah. round, everybody is equal, like and, equidistant. And, and everybody has a, a fixed limit of time to speak. Oh, well, yes. that's because of the number, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> three over, uh, but, 300 but, over. But I think them. that works. You know, uh, mm. His Eminence said each person three minutes yeah. each yeah. time. Some yeah. people grumble that they didn't have time. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. so it, it forces you not to be long winded. <laughs> yes. right. Say what really matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it forces you to say what is the point or the key takeaway you want everybody yes. to get. Yeah. Yeah. Other than rambling through, yeah. right? So everyone is represented. Yeah. Yeah. And and one of the things that he and many others at the Synod said was they should introduce this process in our diocese, oh. our mm. institutions, parishes, and church organizations. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's seen. Interventions? Uh, three minutes? Conversations Five in minutes? the spirit. Yeah. Well, I think it's a whole package. You know, some you know. people will say, huh, yeah. three minutes, how can? I'm more important than you, you yeah. know. <laughs> in, in, fact, in fact, you know, you, you just shared how your, your organization did it. Yeah. And, and recently, I just had a yeah. small group meeting mm-hmm. with my own ministry. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and I said, let's try this process. Yes. Yeah. Not the full works, yeah. Yeah, but a semblance of it. Mm. Yeah. And, and the fruit that, that it bore, we felt was considerably more. Life giving. Yeah, life giving. Then it would it. have ordinarily been. Culture yeah. of life. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. See yeah. how it goes. <laughs> culture so, of life. Uh, just, uh, just two Sundays ago, so yeah. I, I uh, did a day of reflection for uh, a group in St. Mm. Anthony's Church. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, uh, we did a little bit of introduction and all that, mm-hmm. but then we spent a lot more time praying before the Blessed Sacrament. Yes. Ah. And some of the youth were like, Wow, they've not done that mm. in a long, long time. Mm. Or, or you know, they said, mm. we've never done this in the group. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. And yeah. there was one. I mean, uh, one of the youth who was she was definitely touched, and she was in tears and all that. But the rest of the the group after that said, mm. you know, that was that was different. Mm. That was different. Yeah. I said, that's Jesus. Exactly, <laughs> it's hey, definitely man. different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. when, when you invite Jesus into the room. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so modern society is is very hard to to place God. No, I think you this, know, at the this, center. this this synod is going to teach us. I mean, okay, if we look at it as an entirety, there's so much that's going on yeah. about it, mm-hmm. right? And we we cannot ignore that. Uh, there are questions, uh, people have their doubts, and all of that. Mm-hmm. But yet, these other things that we picked up from the synod, I think there's so much to learn. Yes, and uh, Pope Francis said in the closing mass of his. Uh, at the, in the homily for his closing mass of the synod, mm-hmm. so so Vic reported is that closing of part one of part, part one. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. There's, there's still part a part two. two. So, yeah. much, yes. uh, so much to integrate in this process. Yeah. Um, Pope Francis says we must spend time mm-hmm. to stop 
stop in the name of love, you know, in the name of the right <laughs> and listen, engage, mm -hmm. and journey. And journey. And mm -hmm. that's also part of the culture of life mm -hmm. because you have to stop, listen, and journey with those with unplanned pregnancies, mm -hmm. with those whom we think are, you know, not as fast or with not those who as are suffering. Know, intellectual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, suffering. And those who are elderly because they have so much wisdom that they can give in their own way, isn't it? Yes. And, and suffering, mm. uh, uh, Eminence said during the Ethos lecture, suffering is part of the mystery of man. Mm -hmm. We suffer because of the sins of others. Okay, there's a lot of climate anxiety now, right? But, mm -hmm. but climate is natural and some climate changes are caused by the sin of fellow men, right? Mm -hmm. Because Bishop said, we have been made in the image and likeness of man, mm -hmm. but sin has disfigured us mm -hmm. and distorted our image. And how can we regain it? We look at Christ, the perfect image of the Father. Mm -hmm. And when we want to be restored in right relationship with God, with fellow man and with creation, all we need to do is look at Jesus mm -hmm. and follow him. Mm -hmm. And I, and Catholic News has, you know, a marvellous example of somebody who looked at Jesus and followed him. That's right. And he's uh, like, uh, you are named on <laughs> The Protocletos. So, Andre, Andre, why don't you tell us more about your name? So, so, so we moved from Sandra's Cathedral. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the, the culture of life was This is the yeah. work of the yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Back to Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> to St. Andrew. Yes. Yeah. So actually, uh, St. Andrew, uh, the uh, one of the, in fact, he is the first uh, apostle, yeah. right? He's known as the first. So proto means first mm -hmm. uh, in Greek, actually, mm -hmm. and kletos is uh, called uh, the, or, or person, first call. one, one, the one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Saint Andrew was actually there's nothing really much no. about him, no. mm -hmm. you know, but he was a quiet fellow. Yeah. Uh, Unlike you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just louder, that's all. <laughs> yeah, you're a different kind of a spokesperson. Yeah, you know? and he was. And yes, because, he was. you know, he po he mm. pointed out many things. Uh, when, when, when uh, what do you call this now, when St. John said, uh, because he was apparently uh, a follower of St. John. The Baptist. John the Baptist, the Baptist, that's right. John the Baptist. So, uh, John was too young. The, the John the Evangelist was too young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was but this young. was John the Baptist. So, Jesus' cousin, right? Yes. Yeah, he was a disciple of that. Yeah. And so, but when, but when John the Baptist pointed out and said, this is, there goes the Behold, Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Exactly. Yeah. So, Andrew and another unnamed disciple yeah, unnamed. followed mm -hmm. Jesus. And then, you know, they said, you know, can we come and... Yeah, come and see, right? He yeah, said, come he and said, see. come and see. Yeah. Can we follow you? Can we follow you home? Yeah. Jesus said, come and see. Sure, la, come la, come and take a look. La, you know? right. no, no pressure, right? Just come and <laughs> take a look. And then yeah. other times, he was he was also very watchful. And during the feeding of the 5,000, mm. he was the one who noticed the boy with the, uh, uh, the five, five loaves and two fishes. Fish. That's right. That's right. You know? And yeah. so he was an observer. Yes. But he kept quiet for a little yeah. while, thinking yeah. that, you know, that country. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's, right. That's right. But the Lord saw it yeah. and said, hey, mm. yeah. That's right. You know? So he was he was quite uh, uh, that sort of a person. And most importantly, he brought his brother. That's right. Peter ah, to his Jesus. Brother, that's right. Right. And Peter was um at, at that time a point uh, in time uh, I mean the Peter that we read in the in the gospels was a fiery man who was yeah. full yeah. of a lot of it was about himself. Yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah. it looks like one brother was the introvert. Yeah. 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 The other was the yeah. extrovert. Yeah. Right. Oh, one he, I think St. Andrew was, was sensitive to, to God's yeah. promptings yes, in his life. Yes, that's right. That's right. right. Yeah. Peter was a lot more, you yeah. know, yeah. I can do this. And, yeah. 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 But also a good heart. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and and whatever we're telling you in Catholic News is legit, okay? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from Pope Benedict XVI's yeah. catechesis on the Twelve Apostles that That's he right. gave uh, That's right. uh, throughout 2006. That's yeah. right. Mm. Yeah. Yes, that is the one indeed. Yeah. And uh, so go and read up on St. Andrew, whose uh, feast is celebrated on the 30th of November. And, mm -hmm. and celebrate him because uh, we can imitate him. And be a behind-the-scenes person. Not everybody is called to be out here like in radio, you know, like mm. Andre or Beatrice, <laughs> you know, but but um, you can we do your own thing. choose to be. <laughs> <laughs> you can be your own thing That's and call calling, people yeah. to Jesus yeah, yeah. and evangelize in this way, you know. Absolutely. And to a good way of evangelizing as a family uh, or, or to people, 
because Christmas and Christmas around the corner, right? Mm. Advent is more around the corner than yes. Christmas. Mm-hmm. So this issue of Catholic News, we have a pull out double page spread mm-hmm. for with a children's advent calendar with a beautiful. Oh. Nice. Well, I'm not going to tell you what's in it. You, you go and must, have a copy of it. No, but it's really very nice. <laughs> it is. You must go and do that. I, wanna, do I want to see that. Yeah. Yeah. I want that page. Well, you can do it as a family and it's a wonderful way to evangelize. Kids, it's, yeah. And you know, I mean, I think not only the kids will like it, but even the adults yeah. will also like yeah. it. Definitely. You know? Mm-hmm. And if, if you do it really day by day, you will see the beauty of the picture coming together. That's, mm-hmm. that's how life is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. But, you know, God moments come to us in bits and pieces, but yeah. one day yeah. you will see the whole picture and he said, oh, now I know what <laughs> God's plan is for me. Don't, 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 don't try to finish it all in one day. Yeah. <laughs> Take your time to savor it. Yeah. you got to go according to the numbers, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's and all we are pray, saying. Pray. <laughs> so it's an advent calendar. It starts yeah. on December the 1st. So make sure you pick up your copy this weekend because yeah. it's hey. the November 25th, 26th issue. Yeah. Mm. Okay, yes. really, guys, I'm sorry, but this is, that's all the time we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, Top ever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, this is brothers, make sure you get a hold of your copy of uh, the Cathy News this weekend, yes. right? Yes, yes. Uh, calendars all sold out, sorry. Yeah, but if you really want, I think uh, there are some... Uh, some you parishes can, have uh, it. Uh, yeah, some parishes. I already really yeah. know Christ the King has it. Bookshops. So. Yeah. Bookshops are also yeah. that I called. Oh, oh. Okay. So I yeah. I know St. Joseph's Victoria Street was, over the weekend, was uh, yeah promoting yeah, some. Yeah, so so you, you may be still okay. able yeah, to get... That's another way of evangelizing. Huh? Mm-hmm. Just buy a copy and give it to someone. Yeah. Or a Catholic news subscription. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, for we Christmas. are not alone. Yeah. <laughs> we are journeying with one another. Certainly not. So will you choose the culture of life for the culture of death life, as a yeah. learned priest always says you know Father Richards Ambrose I just love his homilies mm. he said the choice is yours yes, yes that's right St. Andrew pray for us St. Andrew pray for us good one so thank you so much thank yeah. you Andre thank you. Michelle and, and Alf uh, yeah. for, for being here with us thanks today. for having us thank and you. thank you uh, dear sisters and brothers for tuning in we will see you in two weeks time two weeks oh, I think yeah. so yes yeah. yeah. alright uh, but we'll, we'll still be here okay stay, stay with us bye take care bye bye have a great day bye.